it got rid of the will. <laughs> Daryl Whitman calls it retaliation. He says he was fired from his job as an investigator in the Federal Whistleblower Protection Program for exposing what he calls a disturbing pattern of mismanagement in OSHA's Region 9 office in San Francisco. I was going to report when I saw what I thought to be violations of law and policy. I was going to report them and they were going to have to be responsive to the reports and they didn't like that. Whitman spoke out to the investigative unit earlier this year. He says he tried to warn OSHA leader managers were pressuring employees to close cases without properly investigating. He says they wanted to clear owing backlog. I went through every conceivable channel and what I saw was inaction. Whitman says his supervisor altered his reports to change his conclusions and discomplaints, even when Whitman found they had merit. And when we reviewed OSHA's whistleblower case were dismal. In Region 9, OSHA found in favor of just 2.8% of all cases. Oh, for <laughs> sake. Can we at least assume that this do-gooding gentleman whose specific job it is to help whistleblowers avoid punishment will be rewarded for his courage? Whitman's case gained national attention on The Daily Show with John As soon as you broadcast anything, I'll be fired. In termination papers, OSHA states it fired Whitman for six reasons. Lack of candor during an investigatory meeting and unauthorized release of government information. Whitman admits he gave complainants information about how he thought their cases were mishandled. The real reason was that uh, I appeared on your program. <laughs> Whitman himself is now a complainant before another government agency, the Office of Special Counsel. The OSC protects federal employees from retaliation for whistleblowing. If he's successful, Whitman's claim could result in a settlement with OSHA or financial reinstatement. Retaliation doesn't end. Representing Whitman is Tom Devine, director of GAP, the Government Accountability Project. Over the past three decades, Devine has testified before Congress, helped pass whistleblower laws, and assisted thousands of whistleblowers. Individual humans are the Achilles heel of bureaucratic corruption, and um, that's the people that we specialize in helping. A critic of the OSHA whistleblower protection program, Devine believes Whitman's claims have merit. They ring true based on our own experience and the complaints of lawyers who investigated whistleblowers. Then when we start hearing them from the people who are responsible to protect the whistleblowers, uh, it really strikes a chord. OSHA declined to comment on Whitman's allegations because it is an ongoing personnel case. In emails, OSHA has acknowledged problems with the whistleblower program, but said the agency has taken steps to improve them. Meanwhile, Whitman hopes for reform. He says he risked and lost his job to expose what he considers the program's failure to protect public health and safety. It may be one of the most important programs in the federal government because it touches all of our lives in different ways. Now, Whitman says OSHA dismisses too many valid complaints and finds in favor of too few whistleblowers. We finally have the numbers from the National OSHA office, and tonight 11 will break them down and we'll explain to you what's being proposed to fix all of these problems at OSHA. He blew the whistle on his employer because he was worried about public safety. Ironically, he investigated whistleblower cases for the federal government. Investigative reporter Vicki Wynn first brought you the story of an OSHA employee who claims his agency failed to stand up for workers who raised those red flags specifically about safety. Vicki joins us now. So what's the latest, Vicki? Well, Jess and Raj, Daryl Whitman put his career on the line to expose what he calls dysfunction within OSHA. He said the agency is hurting the very people it's supposed to protect, workers who are fired for reporting safety problems that can harm the public. Now we've learned Whitman is the one out of a job. They got rid of the squeaky wheel. <laughs> Daryl Whitman calls it retaliation. He says he was fired from his job as an investigator in the Federal Whistleblower Protection Program for exposing what he calls a disturbing pattern of mismanagement in OSHA's Region 9 office in San Francisco. I was going to report when I saw what I thought to be violations of law and policy. I was going to report them and they were going to have to be responsive to the reports, and they didn't like that. Whitman spoke out to the investigative unit earlier this year. He says he tried to warn OSHA leaders managers were pressuring employees to close cases without properly investigating. He says they wanted to clear a growing backlog. I went through every conceivable channel and what I saw was inaction. Whitman says his supervisor altered his reports to change his conclusions and dismissed whistleblower complaints, even when Whitman found they had merit. And when we reviewed OSHA's whistleblower cases, the results were dismal. In Region 9, OSHA found in favor of just 2.8% of all cases. Oh, for sake. <laughs> 
can we at least assume that this do-gooding gentleman, whose specific job it is to help whistleblowers avoid punishment, will be rewarded for his courage? Whitman's case gained national attention on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. I think as soon as you broadcast anything, I'll be fired. In termination papers, OSHA states it fired Whitman for six reasons. They include lack of candor during an investigatory meeting and unauthorized release of government information. Whitman admits he gave complainants information about how he thought their cases were mishandled. The real reason was that uh, I appeared on your program. <laughs> Whitman himself is now a complainant before another government agency, the Office of Special Counsel. The OSC protects federal employees from retaliation for whistleblowing. If he's successful, Whitman's claim could result in a settlement with OSHA or financial reinstatement. Retaliation doesn't end. Representing Whitman is Tom Devine, legal director of GAP, the Government Accountability Project. Over the past three decades, Devine has testified before Congress, helped pass whistleblower laws, and assisted thousands of whistleblowers. Individual humans are the Achilles heel of bureaucratic corruption. and. Um, that's the people that we specialize in helping. A critic of the OSHA whistleblower protection program, Devine believes Whitman's claims have merit. They ring true based on our own experience and the complaints of lawyers who investigated whistleblowers. Then when we start hearing them from the people who are responsible to protect the whistleblowers, uh, it really strikes a chord. OSHA declined to comment on Whitman's allegations because it is an ongoing personnel case. In emails, OSHA has acknowledged problems with the whistleblower program, but said the agency has taken steps to improve them. Meanwhile, Whitman hopes for reform. He says he risked and lost his job to expose what he considers the program's failure to protect public health and safety. It may be one of the most important programs in the federal government because it touches all of our lives in different ways. Now, Whitman says OSHA dismisses too many valid complaints and finds in favor of too few whistleblowers. We finally have the numbers from the National OSHA office, and tonight at 11, we'll break them down and we'll explain to you what's being proposed to fix all of these problems at OSHA. It's a very important story. We'll see you at 11 o'clock, Vicki. All right. Now, if you have a tip or a story turning its back on whistleblowers, federal laws are supposed to protect them from retaliation when they blow the whistle on serious problems. Now, many of these problems impact our safety. Vicki Wynn has been investigating this issue for months, and Vicki, you have the new data. What's happening to these whistleblowers? Well, not a whole lot, Raj and Jess. The federal whistleblower protection program is full of reports from workers across the nation who say they have been fired for raising red flags about public health and safety. Critics say their reports are wallowing in a backlog, most of them getting dismissed even when they shouldn't. Now we're seeing for the first time just how often the government finds in favor of whistleblowers. From airlines to pipelines, they're the workers on the front lines who speak up when systems break down. The government built a safety net for whistleblowers who get fired for raising red flags about safety issues or illegal activities. It's called the Whistleblower Protection Program, and it's run by OSHA. Whistleblowers don't have a fighting chance when they seek justice at this agency. Tom Devine has fought for whistleblowers for more than three decades. He's testified before Congress and helped pass national whistleblower laws. Now he helps defend employees against retaliation. The OSHA program has been so counterproductive that I view it as a Trojan horse. It's an agency we warn whistleblowers about. I was told by my supervisor, oh, just conduct an interview and dismiss it. Before any you knew any of the facts? Correct. Whistleblower investigator Daryl Whitman spoke out to the investigative unit earlier this year. He said supervisors in OSHA's Region 9 office in San Francisco pressured investigators to close cases without proper review and dismissed complaints even when he found they had merit. Whitman pointed to the numbers in Region 9. OSHA found cases had merit less than 3% of the time. Is it an acceptable number to you? No, absolutely not. Now we've learned it's not just Region 9. The investigative unit crunched the numbers for all 10 OSHA regions across the nation. We found from 2004 to 2014, the agency awarded merit to cases less than 2% of the time. About 22% of cases resulted in settlements. OSHA calls those outcomes favorable to the complainant. But the numbers show OSHA dismissed 59% of whistleblower cases, the majority of complaints it investigated. I'd characterize it as obscene. What's more, we found in seven of the 22 industries protected by whistleblower laws, OSHA did not issue a single merit finding.
Our investigation also found whistleblowers have to wait a long time for answers. OSHA is supposed to complete investigations in 90 days or less, but the agency reports 71% of all cases failed to meet that deadline. The average time it takes OSHA to complete a case has increased from 98 days in 2004 to 378 days in 2014. There's no excuse for how long the cases take. Devine says in many cases staff lack training. OSHA allows companies up to a year to respond to a complaint and managers add delays by reinvestigating certain cases. That time takes a toll on whistleblowers. They lose their homes. Um, uh, you know, their lives are a living hell uh, while OSHA fiddles. NBC Bay Area spoke with more than a dozen whistleblowers who believe OSHA unfairly dismissed their complaints or dragged out their cases, including these men. They raised red flags about environmental testing and aviation. I couldn't sleep. I had problems eating. I have nightmares. Take a ping pong ball and put it inside a blender and turn it on. I'm that ball. OSHA has acknowledged problems. A series of government reports dating back 25 years found delays in investigating and deciding complaints, and complainants did not always receive appropriate investigations. Neil Gintolik led the whistleblower program from 2006 to 2011. She says OSHA leaders asked her to reform the flailing agency. I think it was lip service and, um, and that no one really had any great intention of doing anything terribly different than they already did it. Tolik says recommendations outlined in this white paper landed on deaf ears. I mean, it drove me out. She left OSHA with this conclusion. I think the solution is apparent, but nobody wants to, to do it, which is to move the entire program out of OSHA. NBC Bay Area made request to interview Dr. David Michaels, the head of OSHA. He declined. Instead, OSHA pointed us to this April memo Michaels wrote saying, we are focused on improving both the efficiency and quality of our investigations. Michael says the program reached a record number of merit findings in 2013, 75 out of more than 3,700. He notes monetary awards to whistleblowers more than doubled in a span of four years, from 15 million to 35 million. His memo concludes, no one benefits if workers are silenced for sounding an alarm when they see a problem that could injure, sicken, or kill someone. Dr. David Michaels has given some very inspiring speeches about his desire for this to become an effective worker rights organization. Um, so far, there's, um, the rhetoric is not clothed in reality. In recent years, OSHA has added more program staff and created a national whistleblower advisory committee. But critics, including Devine, say Congress simply needs to take this program out from under OSHA. We'll certainly follow those developments and let you know what happens. It's a valuable insight. Thank you, Vicki.